Hello everyone. It's James again. And before I start today's video. I just want to quickly say. All work in this video contains 100% original content of and by myself James Smith, otherwise known as Bigood4000, and was uniquely created with normal software, by myself James Smith. As I purchased commercial rights from Normal to produce my unique and original video with this software. Commentary is uniquely my own thoughts, feelings, and expressions. Now that I have that out of the way. I do hope your day is going better than fantastic. Today I wanted to talk about something very important. And that's the narcissist's slow love bombing process. And why it's very very important to understand. You see. The narcissist understands and has understood for some time now. The best way for them to get away with what they are doing in life. Is to go completely undetected. Or at least as much as possible. So what I'm about ready to say. Is something I think some narcissists have been doing since the beginning of time. But. But I think more and more narcissists are adapting to this way and method. Simply because more and more people are becoming aware of narcissism and toxic people. And this method or tactic so to speak. Is what I call slow love bombing. Or love bombing in small undetectable doses. You see not only do narcissists learn how to adapt and change their tactics based on what is happening in society at the moment. And what people are learning about narcissists at a particular time in society. The smart covert narcissist oftentimes learn from their failures on how to hide what they do the next time they find a target they want to get narcissistic supply from. It's likely they though they might have had some successes with over the top love bombing before. They might not have gotten what they wanted out of the relationship. Such as the target might have escaped before marriage took place. Or starting a family. Or buying a piece of property together. And like we know. Narcissists don't sit and think. Wow. I have to become a better person. So next time I can have a better relationship. Nope. That's not what they are thinking at all. However. What they are thinking is on how they can better trick the next target to get what it is they are looking. This again when talking about romantic relationships. This is why this type of information should be a part of family law. Or fixing family law. Because a narcissist or other toxic person might play what we call the long con. And by the time you realize what is going on. You're married. You have property together. And you have a family together. And this is right where the narcissist wants you. Simply because they know that your life will be ruined if you stay and you stand a chance of your life being ruined if you leave. And in order to achieve this goal. The narcissist will use what I call the slow love bombing method or tactic. You see. Even if you took someone that grew up with a narcissist parent or parents. And that's all they knew. And then a potential narcissist suitor entered their life with honest conversation on how this narcissist planned on using this person and messing up their life. Even the most emotional needy person would likely walk the other way from this narcissist suitor. But if this new person that enters their life doesn't raise any alarm bells. They are friendly. Nice. Helpful and kind. But not in an over-the-top way. Even someone that grew up in a healthy home might not see the trouble that is waiting around the corner if they enter such a relationship with such a person. This is why you should always have an out. Here's an example. When you get a job that you think is so great. And hey. Today it might be. But what do we hear a lot now about such things? Always keep your resume up to date. Always keep your skill sharp. Be careful what you say at work and information that you share with your co-workers and supervisor about your personal life. Even if it seems harmless at the moment. And the reason why we hear such things is because a work environment can go from a great experience to toxic literally overnight. And you want to have the flexibility to get up and leave any time you need to just get up and leave. Oh. And the other one is. Make sure you have enough money saved. Which is hard for many because of all the bills we have to pay. But it's a good thing to do. 
Because you need to have an out with your job. Because you don't know. You don't know if your co-worker that seems great today. Won't change on you six months or a year later. You don't know if they are feeding information that you are telling them to your boss. You don't know. And romantic relationships can be the same way. You might meet someone that truly loves you and you will be with them for the rest of your lives. But this person might not have the same intentions as you. And they are just trying to trap you to get your money and narcissistic supply. And just in case you are dealing with someone that has pulled the wool over your eyes. It's a good idea to have an out. And how do we do that? To have the ability to take a step back and examine your relationships that you have with people. To ask yourself questions about such relationships. Look. It feels nice when someone cares about you. But you have to be aware that though this is something that someone loves you will do. This is also the tactic of a toxic person as well. They won't buy you gifts all the time. But if you are in need of help. They show up with whatever you were needing help with. Or just little things as well as the big things. Little things that are just so much so under the radar that it almost masks itself as normal loving behavior. Because you see. Narcissists study people. They learn what makes people laugh. What makes people cry. Yes. It's true. You can really tell a lot about someone if you take them to a comedy place and they have trouble understanding jokes that the average person can get and understand just like that. However. A smart narcissist might learn this skill to understand what triggers certain people to laugh. What triggers them to cry. What triggers them to a great many of emotions out there. And they do it so they can fit in and go undetected. And sometimes it can take many many years before their target starts to realize. What a minute. It's not in my head. And they realize what has been done to them. But by that point it can be years. And years into a relationship. But how can these years and years be shortened into months. And hopefully you getting away with in that time frame. And that's your ability to examine your relationships. And friendships every so often. And to understand. Even if you aren't dealing with a narcissist. That there is so much narcissism in the world right now. The person you are with can change due to outside influences and do things that can mimic the toxic things narcissists tend to do. And it's your ability to take a step back and examine where things are at and where things are going. I know an individual that was getting to know someone that was headed towards a romantic relationship. However. They took a step back and looked at their relationship with this person. And they started to see the toxic behavior masked under a slow love bombing. And it was only detected because they had the ability to step back. And think about the relationships carefully. And they were able to very carefully and politely step away from the relationship and this person that was a possible narcissist. Which is another topic for another video. But we all know about narcissistic rage and narcissistic injury. And if you find out someone you are dealing with is a narcissist. It's usually not advisable that you go off on them and tell them about how they are a narcissist. Because that will do nothing but prompt this narcissist to go after you even more so. And try to do something very terrible that could greatly and negatively impact your life. Yes. Boundaries are important. But the narcissist's way around your boundaries are several mini Trojan horses. They are so small that you can't pick up on what is happening unless you stop for a moment and look around you. And you have to understand. Though we are gaining knowledge about narcissism and learning how and what they are about. The narcissist is figuring out ways they can sidestep our knowledge and information that we are gaining. So they can still get what they want. Narcissistic supply. Control. Power. And money if they can get it. Someone might meet you today that might appear to be kind. And they might really be a kind person. Only time will tell. And even if they are. It's still okay to step back even with this individual and ask yourself questions about your relationship with this individual. You quite often hear when the masses talk about romantic relationships. To basically throw caution to the wind and just go with the flow. 
and to stop questioning things. But then you see how many of these same people that threw caution to the wind. How many of their lives were destroyed and utterly ruined in family court or in some other area of life because they chose to not question things or think about things. They chose to just go with the flow. It seems those that benefit greatly from this go with the flow mentality are the narcissists. They thrive on people that can only see things from a surface level. Because the narcissist operates on many complicated levels. I've mentioned before. There is a video out there. I can't remember who made it. But it's of a woman confessing that she is a narcissist. And that she knows what she does to others is wrong. Yet she does it anyway. And has little feeling or empathy for others she causes misery to. Though she knows it's wrong. And she admitted. That she only does nice things for people. To make these people feel obligated to her in some way or another. This can also be achieved when the narcissist uses slow love bombing. Wow this person has always been there for me. So forth and so on. And because of this so called closeness. The ability of self reflection becomes cloudy or is completely shut off. And if the person they are dealing with is a narcissist or another toxic type. They can totally infiltrate your life and ruin it from within. Narcissists thrive on surface level thinkers. And those that react in the way the media. Television. And movies might prompt you to react. They don't want you to think outside of the box. They don't want you to have the ability to step back and think. And here's the thing. This is a skill that you should develop anyway so you can really self reflect on your life. Yes as someone that has empathy. This is something we know how to do in general. However it has to go deeper. Where is my life going? Where am I headed long term on this life course that I am on? How can I live a better life? What things about me attract toxic people? What traits about me are toxic? And when you get better about answering questions about yourself. You can start to do this in other areas of life. I've mentioned before. There have been a few times. When at work and in other areas of living. Where I felt like I was about ready to say something. That might have been considered oversharing. A problem that many narcissistic abuse survivors have. But in these few instances. I caught myself. And I kept what I was about ready to say to myself. And then weeks or months later. The person or people I was going to share these things with. They did or said something that made me so glad I didn't share what I was going to say with them. And what I realized is. Yes. I can go through being friendly and kind. And even talkative. But careful. And to self-examine. Because not all things said need to be said. Because narcissists are data gatherers looking to get as much information on you and you and you as they can. So they can use that information against you at a later date. But it's the same self-betterment tool so to speak of self-reflection. Which can be used to help sniff out someone that is possibly slow love bombing you. The ability to step back. The ability to see things in 3D so to speak. And file away certain happenings and connect the dots from other happenings. And say to yourself. You know what? I could be wrong. But this doesn't look good. I think I want to distance myself from this person. The other part is to realize about yourself in your self-reflection stage with in regards to love bombing no matter it be slow love bombing or overt love bombing. Is that if you grew up in a home with no love. If you've been surrounded by narcissists most of your life. Any kind of love bombing might get its hooks into you. Even if you think you have a good grasp on what narcissism is about. And because this is the case. Taking a step back and examining your relationships and the things that are happening in them. Is like having a boundary. It is a boundary. It's a filter. It's a filter to keep the bad out. But we need to know. The bad will get more sneaky as time goes on. And it's on you to care about you and your life. You have to know you are worth something.
Because every second you waste with a narcissist is a second gone you could be doing something else. Something productive. But I'm curious. Has this slow love bombing happened to you before? How did you catch it? Are you catching it faster these days? What type of things are you noticing out there? I'm curious. With that said. That's all I have for today. Please leave your comments below. Because we are all still learning. With that said. I do hope your day is blessed. And until next time. Bye for now. And be good to yourself.